everyone, this is your video showing the not only procedure but also results from the chemical reactions lab. Um, you want to make sure that you have all of the reactions numbers one through eight predicted before we begin. But once you do that, we'll dive in. We're going to start reaction one with magnesium um, and the oxygen in the air around us. Now it's important that once I get this thing lit up from the Bunsen burner over here that you don't look directly at it. So pretend it's like the sun. You can look at it out the corner of your eye but don't just stare at it for the entire time that it's on fire. All right, let's try it. There's our magnesium. Again, we're not looking directly at it. You can see that certainly something is happening. There's a lot of gas being given off. You can predict what gas that was using the reactions that you've already kind of written out. All right, so that was reaction one. Pretty straightforward, but also a pretty cool reaction. Reaction number two requires hydrochloric acid. Um, so I'm gonna grab myself a test tube. Before I do that, let's kill our Bunsen burner. Grab myself a test tube. And in my test tube, I am going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid, we're gonna use about 40 drops. And while I put my drops in, I'm gonna turn the lights on so you can see a little bit better. All right, I'm back while we have the drops in. We also have our lights back. Uh, this has about 40 drops of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to take, again, a piece of magnesium, very similar to the stuff that we just saw react with the oxygen in the air around us. We're gonna put that into our hydrochloric acid and we'll see what happens. All right, so you can't really see that well, but it is fizzing. Um, while that's going on, I'm actually gonna feel this thing and see if I feel anything happening. Besides, we're looking for either exothermic or endothermic, and I actually am feeling a little bit of heat being given off. Now, while this reaction is still going, I'm also going to light up a wooden splint. And the reason for the wooden splint will become evident shortly. We're looking for a gas to be given off from this reaction in the test tube. All right, so I've got a flaming splint. We've got a reaction giving off a gas in here. It is warm to the touch. Let's see what happens when I put the flaming, uh, flaming splint into the test tube. And you could hear that, something ignited. So that's actually hydrogen gas being ignited by, um, by the flaming splint. And that hydrogen gas made a little sound as it escaped from the test tube. So we'll put this to the side and we'll let that continue to, continue to react. So that is reaction number two. Reaction number three, again, requires a test tube. This time we're gonna use something called ammonium carbonate. So I'm just gonna take a very small scoop of ammonium carbonate with my scupula. Like so, we'll put that into the test tube. And we again need to heat this. So let me get my Bunsen burner back on. My striker is not the best. You know, now I know how you guys feel. All right, we're gonna use a match. I really struck out on that one when I struck oh. a match. All right, even better. So now we have our ammonium carbonate. We are going to hold this into the uh, Bunsen burner. And once we have this thing heated up, what we're gonna do is take a piece of litmus paper and we're gonna put the litmus paper in the mouth of this test tube to see what happens. Now I'm going to get my litmus paper set up because it actually works better when this is a little bit moist. So I'm going to take my litmus paper, I'm going to put some deionized water on top of it. We're going to moisten it up. And then we'll see what happens whenever we put that litmus paper into the mouth of the test tube. All right, we also have a fun little test tube clamp and we are going to heat this over the flame for about 30 seconds. And I'm going to point it away from me while that is taking place. So we're trying to decompose this ammonium carbonate. And let's see if we get anything when we put the litmus paper in top. And I don't know if you can see that, but it turned very blue very quickly. Um, I don't know, my shirt, so it's, not, it's no longer pink, it's now a very nice blue. I can actually smell the smell of ammonia if I walk it towards myself. And we again are going to light a wooden splint here and we are gonna see what happens when we put that in the mouth of the test tube. And 
you can see we didn't get that popping sound, but it did put the test or it did put the splint out. So whatever gas we have in the mouth of this test tube was able to put out our flame. Um, so that again is kind of an important thing for us to take note of when we're thinking about what sort of gas might have come out of there. And why we have fire extinguishers. Good point, Mrs. Newman. All right, reaction number four. We are gonna put calcium carbonate in a different test tube. So calcium carbonate, again, kind of a white solid. And this time we are going to add hydrochloric acid to the calcium carbonate. And again, we're gonna have a wooden splint at the ready to ignite. So my hydrochloric acid is right here. We're gonna put in about 20 drops. You'll notice that we're not really counting that specifically. We don't care so much about quantitative results for this lab, we care more about qualitative results. When I put in the hydrochloric acid, you'll immediately see bubbles being given off from the reaction. That's good evidence of a gas. Let's quickly see if we can ignite some of that gas and see what happens. Just need one more hand for this. All right, so we're again going to ignite the gas coming off of this reaction and see what happens. And again, we have put the splint out. Um, so that was with calcium carbonate that we reacted hydrochloric acid, and again, the splint went out. So the question is, what sort of gas might be being given off to make the splint go out? Looking at reaction number five, we will take the test tube. We're gonna take some calcium chloride this time. Sorry, not calcium, copper, copper chloride, copper two chloride. We're gonna put some copper two chloride into our test tube. And this time we are going to add sodium Phosphate. Let's see what happens when we add sodium phosphate to the top copper two chloride. That's hard to see initially, but you can kind of see a nice white precipitate being formed in the bottom of our test tube. And that white precipitate looks really cloudy. It looks kind of like a solid. So we had two clear solutions. It's hard to tell, but you have sodium phosphate, which is a clear liquid. You, sorry, clear solution. You have copper two chloride, which is a blue colored solution. Those came together to form, again, liquid and solutions surrounding a white solid. It looks really cloudy. <clears throat> Moving on to reaction number six, we're again gonna use our copper two chloride. This time we are going to add zinc. And I apologize, I actually got these ones backwards. So the reaction you just saw with the white precipitate is reaction six, my apologies. This is reaction five. So reaction five, uses copper two chloride again. They both use copper two chloride, but reaction five is going to be copper two chloride reacting with zinc. Let's scoop out a little bit of our zinc. And let's see what happens there. Now this reaction isn't doing anything initially. Um, you can see the zinc is kind of just sitting in that copper two chloride. Now, you might be able to see on camera there that it does look a bit darker. So if I show you the zinc and what it looks like originally, we have a pretty um, kind of pale colored gray metal here. And as you continue to look at what's going on in the reaction, you can see that it's getting darker and darker. So as I compare those two, we're getting really dark in the copper two chloride. So that's good evidence that we have a color change and something is happening. You could probably predict what it is that's happening if you complete that reaction on your own. So that was reaction five. Again, reaction six, we already saw that was the copper two chloride and the sodium phosphate. Let's move on to, uh, to reaction seven. In this case, we are gonna take sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide NaOH. <laughs> now we know if this thing has OH in it, that we are likely looking at a base. And I actually did that one incorrectly, and here's why, it was a little bit on purpose. You'll notice that I just started adding a bunch of sodium hydroxide into this test tube. This one actually is one where we care about quantitative. So we care about numbers. So I'm gonna restart and I'm going to specifically count 20 drops of my sodium hydroxide. Now, while I count those 20 drops, it's important for you guys to notice that this is one molar sodium hydroxide. So I know we haven't talked a whole lot about molarity yet, but we will. This is going to allow us to, to basically determine the concentration of an acid that we add. So in addition to the 20 drops of sodium hydroxide, <clears throat> I'm also going to add in a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Now phenolphthalein indicator 
is really cool because in the presence of base, it turns pink. Now when it's neutral, or if it's in acidic solutions, it remains clear. So what we wanna do now is take our sodium hydroxide, which is a base, with this pink indicator in it, and we're gonna add acid to it. And we're gonna figure out how much acid it takes to turn this thing clear. And let's go on the white paper. Let's do that. Since you're we wearing pink. Mrs. Newman. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're gonna count out our drops. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Let me give this thing a little swirl. Here's 11 and 12 and 13, 14, 15. Boom. And you saw how quickly that thing turned to clear. So all of a sudden, we immediately went from pink to clear. And remember that phenolphthalein is really specific in terms of acid or base. So what we did is we went from a base through neutral, pH 7, to an acid, and phenolphthalein is clear in acid. So that's why we saw that sudden pink to clear change. And thankfully, we did it on white paper. Good job, Mrs. Newman. <laughs> so we could actually see what was going on. Done that one a time or two. Now, our final reaction is going to require a little bit more flame. Um, so we're going to get an evaporating dish. Here is our evaporating dish. We're going to put it on something to protect our countertop. And into the evaporating dish in a moment, we are going to add ethanol. <laughs> ethanol is a flammable alcohol. Now, before we begin, I'm going to get a test tube set up with cold water. And the cold water is going to allow us to see if anything is coming off of this reaction when it occurs. So we're going to actually see the presence of a gas, hopefully, by condensing it on that test tube. Now again, we want to turn the lights out so you guys can see this better, so give us two minutes. Into that evaporating dish, I am going to put several drops of ethanol. And then we are going to light that ethanol on fire. And it's a little bit hard to see, but with the lights out, hopefully we'll be able to pick it up on camera. So you can see kind of a blue yellow flame there and what I'd like to do is hold my test tube full of water above that and see if anything appears on that cold water which is going to be really hard to see on camera but that's okay and so it, it's hard to tell but it looks a little bit like your car looks in the morning when it's really cold outside and you have to turn the defroster on. So we are getting a little bit of condensation here on the test tube. So we've got cold water in the test tube. We've got some sort of gas being given off by those flames and that gas is condensing onto this test tube. And so you can think of, of what sort of gases you know about that would condense whenever they're in the presence of something cold. So thank you for joining us for the chemical reactions uh, video. We know that it's a little bit better in person, but for those of you who are at home right now, um, hopefully you can enjoy it. You can obviously ask questions about things that you've seen and see them again in the future. See you guys next time.